we're going to start with some boneless and skinless chicken leg meat. To this I'm going to add some olive oil, a good generous helping and then I'm going to season it with some salt and some pepper and be generous with the pepper. Then I'm going to add in some fresh rosemary and some fresh thyme and then just give it all a good mix. Now of course you can use chicken on the bone and chicken with skin even if you like. You can use any kind of fresh herbs that suit your fancy. Anyway, let that marinate for about 10 minutes. The next thing I'm going to do is get my pan on the stove and I'm using my stainless steel pan and I'm going to heat up some bacon fat because I had some lying around after breakfast this morning but you can use butter or olive oil or ghee or even coconut oil no problem. Once that oil is nice and hot we're going to pan fry the chicken and remember don't crowd the pan do three at a time two at a time if you're cooking for one then just cook well for yourself but this is a large recipe you can sort of uh, save it for multiple meals it's something great for meal prep as well anyway cook that chicken on both sides and as you can see I'm a bit of a novice with the stainless steel pan yet my chicken was sticking a little bit but nonetheless I managed to achieve a decent crust on the chicken and once your chicken is done take it out and set it aside on a plate if you're doing it in multiple batches fry the second batch then and you want to do this on a medium flame you don't want to burn anything but you want to get a nice color on it anyway once you're done frying the chicken set it aside and on to the next step in the same pan I'm going to add in some mushrooms and I'm using some delicious oyster mushrooms that I've got you can use any mushrooms that you like now I'm going to deglaze the pan with a splash of white wine and the idea is to get all those lovely brown bits what we call the fond in cooking off the bottom of the pan so give it all a good mix make sure you scrape all those brown bits off the pan now if you don't want to use white wine you can just use some water no problem plus you'll save on a few carbs as well but I'm just being gourmet and decadent the next thing I'm going to do is add in some minced garlic because we want a nice garlicky flavor to this and I'm also going to add in half a stock cube yep this is just a regular mushroom stock cube and give it all a good mix now if you don't have a stock cube you can just season it with salt and pepper alternatively you can just add stock later to it now once the mushrooms have started to get some color on it now I'm going to add in the resting juices from the chicken and now we're going to deglaze the pan again but this time with just some water this is where the water and the stock cube will sort of get together and become stock or you could just use chicken stock or vegetable stock here no problem anyway give it all a good mix now you will cook this down depending on how thick you want your sauce if you're looking for a thick sauce then cook this down till it's half the volume otherwise this is fine we're now going to add in some fresh cream or as you Americans call it heavy whipping cream or as the British call it double cream mix that in and give it all a good mix I guess mix it in means give it all a good mix anyway I'm going to finish it with some fresh parsley and then I'm going to add all that chicken back in just so that it can cook and soak up all that sauce oh yeah now I'm just being decadent so I've got some red Leicester cheese from the UK that I'm going to grate over the chicken and yep that my friends looks delicious now you can give it all a good mix but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to add a little more parsley on the top and then our chicken is ready and there you have it our grilled chicken in a mushroom and white wine sauce is ready and it looks delicious 
So the first thing I'm going to do is prep some mushrooms. I'm using some nice portobello mushrooms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the stalks of the mushroom and set those aside as I'm going to use them to make the sauce. And then I'm going to take the caps of the mushroom and the bigger ones I'm going to cut into four nice big chunks and the smaller ones into three nice big chunks. The idea is that you have nice meaty mushrooms in the sauce. Once that's done it's time to tackle my beef and I'm using beef tenderloin. Now if you live anywhere outside India I would strongly recommend you use some kind of cut meant for roasting. So you can use chuck, you can use uh, the short rib, you can use anything that basically is for stewing. Ask your butcher he will help you out. Anyway I cut the meat into three big chunks that's enough for this recipe and then of course I season it liberally with salt and pepper on both sides and then my beef is ready. Next I get my Dutch oven on the stove and I heat up some avocado oil. This is the first time I'm cooking with avocado oil but if you don't have avocado oil you can use any other keto approved cooking fat. Once that oil is nice and hot and it's smoking I'm going to sear off the beef. What we're trying to do basically is just get some color and brown the meat. We're not looking to cook the meat all the way through. So put it in the pan, don't touch it, just let it cook on one side for a minute or two and once it's nice and brown you're going to flip it over and let the other side brown. Now since these are pretty big chunks of meat I'm going to sear it on all sides not just the top and the bottom on the left and the right as well. Anyway sear your meat get some color on it and then get it out of the pan. I had one more piece to sear so I put that in the pan and I just let it sear on one side then the other then I rolled it around I tried to get all that lovely caramelization from the bottom of the pan and then once it had some color I took it out of the pan. The next thing I did was add a very generous amount of butter because well keto and butter yum yum. And then as the butter melts, I'm going to add in some roughly chopped onions. Just cut into slightly big chunks. And then I season them with a little bit of salt. And I start to cook these onions. Now you want to cook these onions on a medium heat. You want to get some color on them. You want to make them soften and become translucent. And well, the color happens later. You know, first the onion becomes translucent. It starts to soften and then it gets some color. That's the order of things. Anyway, once the onions have softened, I'm going to add in some celery. And then we're going to cook that and that will soften as well. Now normally for a pot roast, you would use onion, celery and carrots. But since carrots have too many carbs, we're skipping those. This is normally called a mirepoix. I think that's how you say it. And it's the base for most sauces in French cooking or even stocks for that matter. Onion, celery, carrot. Anyway, we got no carrots here. Once the onion and the celery have started to soften and get a little bit of color, slightly brown, I'm going to add in some garlic cloves. And I'm also going to throw in the stalks of our mushroom. And I'm going to throw in a bouquet ghani. Now a bouquet ghani is basically just herbs tied together. And I'm tying up some bay leaves, some thyme and some rosemary. And just take some butcher string and tie it up. And that's your bouquet ghani. And I throw that into the pot as well. And give it all a good mix. And of course I let everything cook down. Now the reason why I use the mushroom stalks is because I don't want to waste any part of the mushrooms. And all the veggies are going to help us make the sauce really nice and thick without using corn flour. Oh yeah, that's my little trick. And the reason we are using the bouquet ghani is because we want to take out all the herbs later. You'll find out soon enough. Anyway, once the veggies are cooking and the pan starts to get brown at the bottom and you can see it turning darker and darker, we're going to deglaze with some red wine vinegar. You can also use cooking wine, you can also use white wine vinegar. This is mainly to add a little bit of acidity to the sauce. So anyway, give that a good mix and deglaze the pan. Anyway, now it's time to add in our beef, resting juices and all. And then we're going to add in some beef stock. Beef stock, chicken stock, beef broth, any, any kind of stock that you have lying around. Or you can even just use water. And now we're going to cover it and let it cook till the beef is nice and tender. 
and I'm going to tell you to leave the lid slightly open so that the steam can escape. Now ladies and gentlemen, since I'm using beef tenderloin, I'm not going to cook my beef for very long because tenderloin cooks super quickly. However, if you're using chuck or you're using brisket or you're using short rib, it's going to take maybe an hour and a half to two hours on the stove top. Alternatively, you can just put it in your oven at like 190 degrees Celsius for three to four hours because remember slow cooking cuts take time. So just wanted to give you that bit of information. I will have more details, tips and tricks on headbangerskitchen.com. So after about 20 minutes, my beef tenderloin is ready and I'm going to just take it out of the Dutch oven and set it aside. Now I'm just going to let this sauce reduce a little bit more. So I'm just going to keep the heat up and let it boil away rapidly. So now after cooking this for about 10 minutes or so, I'm going to fish out the bouquet garni because I'm going to blend everything that's in the pot. Yeah baby, that's how we're going to thicken our sauce. I've already told you that. Anyway, take out that bouquet garni and I was fishing around because I was pretty sure I saw a stray bay leaf in there somewhere and I found it. So I took out that bay leaf. Then I ladled out all the vegetables from the Dutch oven into my food processor. So just fish them out as best you can and put them in your food processor. Make sure some of that stock goes in as well. And then I'm going to blitz it all and you're going to get a lovely thick puree. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the rest of the braising liquid from the Dutch oven into the food processor and give it all another good blitz. And then our sauce is pretty much ready. Now I'm going to get that same Dutch oven on the stove again and I'm going to heat up some butter and then I'm going to add in the mushrooms and I'm going to season the mushrooms with some salt and some pepper and the idea here now is to saute these mushrooms so just cook them on a medium high heat keep stirring them around and I realized I didn't put enough butter in so I decided to throw in some avocado oil you know just so that there's enough fat in the pan then the next thing I did was add some yellow zucchini once again cut up into big chunks and I gave it all a good mix. Now remember you can cut your vegetables however you like if you want the mushrooms to be thinly sliced or the zucchini to be thinly sliced go right ahead if you don't like mushrooms and you don't like zucchini you can skip them and use any other vegetables that you like. Anyway once these are starting to cook I'm going to basically strain my sauce into the pot. Yep, so get yourself a fine sieve and pour in that blitzed mixture and strain it through. Now what this will do is it will ensure a silky smooth sauce and all the fibers of the vegetables that didn't get blitzed up, they'll get stuck in the sieve and you'll have the smoothest creamiest velvety sauce ever and it'll be nice and thick and no corn flour will have been used. So anyway, it might take some elbow grease, but put that through the sieve and make sure you get all the good stuff from the bottom. And then give it all a good mix, ladies and gentlemen, and we have a delicious looking sauce already. Now I'm gonna add a little Worcestershire sauce to this. This is a little secret to add some more flavor to the sauce. Give it all a good mix, and after cooking it for about a minute or so, I'm going to add my beef back in and make sure that beef is well coated in that sauce ladies and gentlemen and to finish it off I'm going to throw some chopped up celery leaves and also the thinner part of the celery stock so you're going to get some lovely crunch as well in the dish and you could use parsley but I was like why waste this part of the celery let's use everything that we have and of course I'm going to give it one final customary good mix now since I'm using tenderloin for this recipe I'm going to have to slice that beef to serve it and ladies and gentlemen I'm just going to sit back shut up and let you enjoy food porn but just look at that beautiful tender juicy succulent water buffalo oh yeah and let's look at that sauce that we've got ladies and gentlemen it is super rich super thick super delicious and there is no corn flour, no xanthan gum, 
just beautiful vegetables in there anyway ladies and gentlemen our pot roast our keto pot roast is pretty much ready and it looks delicious so the first thing I'm going to do is chop up half a red onion and once I'm done chopping it up I'm going to transfer it to a bowl and squeeze a few drops of lime juice over it just to kind of pickle it let this sit for about 10 minutes then I'm going to take some black olives and just chop them up into nice little rounds you can use green olives if you like you can even use capers for this salad you can even skip them completely if you like once that's done I'm going to get on to my gherkins and I'm just going to slice these up I was not sure how I wanted them so I kind of went vertically and then horizontally and did some funny stuff and anyway you just chop it up the way you like it now it's time to cook the prawns and I'm taking two tablespoons of butter in my cold pan along with garlic I'm using three small cloves you can use one large clove of garlic and I'm using an Italian seasoning mix now you can use any store bought herb mix that you like just make sure it has no sugar I'm going to turn the stove on and put it on the lowest heat possible and ideally if you can use a vessel with a slightly thick bottom so that it cooks really really slowly you just want the butter to melt and infuse with the garlic and the herbs and once that's happened we're going to put in our prawns and just let them cook of course I can't resist giving it all a good mix so keep stirring your prawns and make sure that you are cooking this on the lowest heat possible you literally almost want to butter poach your prawns and because you put the garlic and the herbs in that butter it's going to have an amazing flavor to it as well and remember guys prawns don't take very long to cook so at best maybe four to five minutes depending on the size of the prawns but anyway once my prawns are done I'm going to remove them with a slotted spoon and of course I'm also going to make sure I save that garlic guys do not throw away any of this stuff so to make our salad dressing I'm going to start with the garlic that we fried with the prawns and I'm just going to put it in the bowl and try to crush it with the spoon now I tried for a bit and I was a little unsuccessful so I decided to take the grater and just grate the garlic just basically to mush it up a little bit of course if you don't like garlic you can skip this completely but I am a garlic fiend I just love garlic then I'm going to add in a tablespoon of Headbangers Kitchen homemade mayonnaise to that I'm going to add a teaspoon of sriracha sauce if you want it hotter add some more and then in goes that herb butter that we used to cook the prawns in oh yeah and then of course give it all a good mix it should all come together very easily give it all a good mix and your dressing will be ready you don't even need to season it because well the herb mixture had salt in it and the butter was salted as well now I'm quickly going to chop up some fresh dill and add it to the dressing this is just to give it a nice freshness you can alternatively use parsley as well and give it one final good mix and as you can see I was pretty generous with the dill now it's time to assemble the salad and I'm just using a pre mix of lettuce that I found in the store this stuff is pretty expensive so you can just use normal lettuce whatever lettuce you like no problem then I'm going to add in my prawns my lovely butter poached prawns in go my pickled red onions then the black olives then my gherkins and finally a boiled egg and whoa looks like I perfectly made a semi soft boiled egg look at that yolk oh yeah that's just perfect of course you can use hard boiled if you like and oh yes our salad is pretty much ready to go it looks fantastic anyway enough teasing you with the food porn now I'm going to pour that dressing right over the salad and then give it all a good mix give it all a good mix give it all a good mix I don't think I'm getting this right but give it all a good mix and your salad is ready our delicious keto seafood salad is ready
So we're gonna start by seasoning our mince and I'm using ground pork. We're gonna season it with some salt, some pepper, some paprika, some cayenne pepper and some garlic bread seasoning and this has pretty much all the herbs in it so you don't really need any other herbs but of course you can do whatever you like you can put fresh parsley fresh rosemary fresh thyme whatever you want it's yours to like make your own anyway give it all a good mix and our pork is ready to be used now i've lined my cutting board with some cling film and this is going to help us later on and i'm going to put the mince onto that cling film and shape it into a square once that's done, I'm going to grate the zest of a lime onto that pork mince just for some freshness and because I have it and I can use it because my aunt got it for me from the UK and you don't get these in India. Well, you do, but they're like so expensive. I have to sell a kidney to buy one. Then I'm going to lay down some onion, some green bell peppers, some freshly chopped black olives, some cheese, and some beef pastrami that I got from Turkey thanks to my father-in-law this will be very interesting anyway once that's done we're gonna cut the cling film from one side and this is where it comes in handy we're gonna use the cling film to roll the bacon bomb we just roll it roll it roll and roll and roll and roll and roll in and once you've secured that bacon bomb make sure you press everything together nicely so it's a nice compact bomb and then pick it up gently and put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes. Now I'm going to lay down some bacon strips on my cutting board. Now this you'll have to adjust according to the length of your bacon strips. Mine seem to be a little short. I don't know. Let's see. Anyway, once those are laid down, get that bacon bomb out of the fridge and put it on those bacon strips. And then you just wrap it in that bacon. Oh yeah, simple and easy. Once that's done, let's put it onto our baking tray on a wire rack. And then I'm going to put that barbecue sauce on it and use my basting brush and paint it with that barbecue sauce. Like Picasso, I'm going to paint my bacon bomb. Once your bacon bomb is painted in barbecue sauce, I mean covered in barbecue sauce, put it in your oven which has been preheated to 200 degrees Celsius and we're going to cook it for 45 minutes. Halfway through the process you want to remove it and baste it one more time with that barbecue sauce. And after 45 minutes, that bacon bomb is ready. And oh yeah, that looks great. And we're going to rest it now for about 20 minutes. Look at that delicious bacon bomb. It is a work of art. Anyway, now time to cut open the bacon bomb and look at that cross section. Oh my goodness, porky heaven. That looks fantastic.